This tutorial will show you how to set up an emissive property to your material where you can have certain parts of the mesh glow and emit light. So that part will not be affected by whatever lights you have inside the scene. So this could be used for a phone screen or for example in this tutorial I'll show you how to do this for a TV screen. So here I have a basic scene setup. So we can use it as an example. I have a couple of televisions that I will use them as a property on for the TV screen. And then I have another plane that I'll show you how to do this with a custom texture. I am using a dome light to have some sort of overall lighting inside the scene. And it's using an HDR image of nighttime. So let me show you what that looks like. It's going to be very dark and it looks like this. So this is the perfect candidate for some emissive property for some of the faces on these objects. So first thing we need to do is let's set up a material. I'm going to open up Hypershade and let's create a redshift material. And I'm going to change BRDF to GGX, just like I've been doing in all the previous tutorials. And for null type, I'm going to set this to metalness to use the metalness workflow. So the property that controls emissive is going to be found under overall tab. And it's right here, emission and emission weight. These two are the ones that you want to control and work with. So let me go ahead and I'm actually going to use attribute editor to adjust these. But first we need to apply the material onto the surfaces that we want to be emissive. So I'm going to apply this to both of these TVs to the screen. So in here, I'm just going to show you if you have an entire object combined as one mesh, you can select the faces that you want to apply the material onto. So in this case, this TV screen, right click and assign the existing material. And I'm going to assign the material that we just created. Right now it's just a standard redshift material. And I'm going to do the same thing, but in this one, I have the screen as a separate mesh. So it will work either way. I just wanted to show you a different way of doing it onto the faces of a single mesh or onto the separated mesh. I'm going to right click and it's off screen. Actually, let me go back to object mode, right click, go to assign existing material and assign that material. So right now, if I go ahead and render, uh, nothing will happen. Let me go ahead and enable IPR. And let me select the screen and then open up the attribute editor. So that way I can uh, control the properties for this material through the attribute editor and not hyper shade. I'm going to switch over to RS material tab and go into the overall tab. So the property that we want to control again is emission and emission weight. So as soon as you change emission from black to any other color, whether it's use the slider or left click and select a color, the parts that you have the emissive material assigned onto should begin to emit light and be emissive. Now, in this case, it's not happening because we need to control emission weight. So you adjust the color and then you increase emission weight. So if you change this to anything other than zero, so if I go up to one, the TV screens will begin to emit light. So if I go higher, it will be more intense. And if I change the emission color, this will also change to what that color of the material is. And I can even choose a different color. It doesn't have to be grayscale. So that's it. That's all you really need to do. If you are just using a solid color, you change it and then increase the emission weight. Now, if I turn this down to zero or to all the way to black, nothing will happen. So you need to change the emission color to anything other than black. And it will update. And then you, of course, need to increase the emission weight. And you can go high, you can go up to five, even more, maybe 10 for more intensity. Now you don't have to use a solid color. You can assign a texture to the emission property right here. So let's do that now. Uh, first thing I want to point out is that I do have this TV screen UV. So if I go ahead and open up the UV editor to show you, so this is what it looks like. So if you're going to apply a texture, of course you need to UV your surface. So if I go ahead and Go to the emission property, click on the checker box, go to file, and then go to image name, click on the folder, and let's assign a texture to emit light. And the texture I'm going to use is going to look like this. Just uh, simple color bars. So that's the one I am navigating to. Uh, when you click on the folder icon, it takes you to the source images folder of your project. And I'm just going to off screen select that image. And as soon as you do that, 
it will begin to render out. So now we're using an image instead of a solid color. So if I go back down to overall emission weight, I can increase the emission weight. You can see the emission property is no longer controllable through a color because we have a texture, but you can still control the emission weight and make it more bright or less. So that's it. That's all you need to do for an object that needs to have an emissive property to it, an emissive texture. Now, the other example I want to show you is going to be, uh, it's going to have to do with this plane. So let's say that you want to control which parts are going to be emissive and which parts are not. So on this plane, uh, let me show you, let me close this off. So on this plane, I want to have all these squares around to not emit any, any light. And I want to have this face right here to have a missive. So how would we do that with the same material? Well, to do that, we need to have a mask, a texture that will define which parts are going to be a missive and which parts are not. So let me show you what the UV look like. Go to UV editor and here's what I, what I have. That's single middle face. That's the one I want to have a missive property to it and everything else will not. So for this purpose, I'm going to go ahead and save the UV snapshot so I can have this UV layout in Photoshop so I know where to block out which parts are going to be emissive and which are not going to be emissive. So let me go ahead and save this UV snapshot. I'm going to go ahead and browse and I'm just going to navigate into the folder directory where I want to save this uh, UV layout into. So I'm simply going to go and give it a file name. In this case, it's going to be UV layout emissive. You can name this anything you want, of course. Save. I'm going to define the size on X on width and height. Image format, JPEG is fine. And just hit apply and close. Now it looks like it's not saving. So let me go back to object mode and let me try again. And let's go into Photoshop. In Photoshop, I'm going to go ahead and open up the UV layout. Here's what it looks like. So that way I know where to put that image and how to block this out. So anything in black for a missive texture is going to be a non emissive surface. And anything other than black, either it's an image or a color, will begin to emit light. So if I create a new layer, let me turn the background layer, the UV layout, into an editable layer. I'm going to move it to the top. And I'm going to turn this UV layout into screen mode. So this way I can work on the textures below it. We can rename it now. UV layout. And for this one, I'm going to fill it with black. So I'm going to hit D to get my foreground to black color. And then I'm going to choose the layer one, hit alt backspace to fill it with the foreground. And then, so everything is going to be non-emissive except for this middle square. So for that, I can do a color or I can do an image. So in my case, I'm just going to go ahead and bring that, uh, those color bars back in here. That's what I'm going to use. I'm going to drag it in here. Uh, the image looks large. So I'm going to hit control T and just scale this layer down and just position it right where it needs to go. And then I'm just going to save this as a PNG, as a texture. So again, to reiterate, anything in black will be not emissive and all the other colors will begin to emit light. And you'll see this in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as my PNG. Let's export. And I'm just going to save this as emissive test. And I'm just placing it on off screen into the source images folder of my project. So here's what the texture looks like. So let's go into uh, back to Maya and I'm going to go ahead and create a whole new material again, just so you get to see me create one and apply that uh, color, that texture. I'm going to go to Hypershade. Let's create a new material. Uh, first, I'm going to clear this and then Redshift, Redshift material. I'm going to change BRDF again to GGX to a, a better, newer reflection model for metal type to metalness. Let's go ahead and apply uh, this material. It's going to be RS Material 2. I didn't name it, but I just remember the name of it because we only created two. So now it's applied onto the plane. Let's select the plane. I'm going to go into the attribute editor, click over to the tab for our, my, my material and go to overall tab. And let me bring up the render view. So here's what it looks like. Nothing is uh, on it other than the default gray redshift material. So now if I go to emission and assign my new texture and uh, go to file, Let's go to folder and off screen, it jumps into the source images folder. So I'm just going to select that emissive test texture, assign it. Nothing's going to happen. Let's enable IPR. Again, nothing's changing. That is because we need to go back up the stack, back into overall property and increase the emission weight. So this is going to hit one 
everything else will stay the same except for whatever the color texture that we have other than black will show up. So if I go higher, it will be more intense. If I go lower, it will not be as intense. So that's how you apply emissive texture onto an object that has both emissive and non-emissive surface properties within the same mesh.